All right, hello everyone and welcome back to Cutabo Space Program, where today we are having a look at the basic orbit mod, which is being made by forum user DMagic. And basically what this mod looks to add into the game is a series of customizable information panels so that you can effectively have as much information or alternatively as little information as possible about your current ship flight status and I love that as it splits it out into three areas to sort of simplify things you have an orbit flight panel a uh, target information panel and a maneuver node information panel and you can then customize what all each of these panels show which is very useful and a great way to get a little bit of extra information while in flight which could help out your mission quite a bit so let's head into the tracking station and jump into one of the ships I have in orbit here to show off how in the world this whole thing works and there we are now that we are with uh, orbiter one with a target of orbiter two and an upcoming waypoint well that's all good information that we could you know benefit from having more information from and so to do that we need to hit this lovely button here the basic orbit button now if you just hover over it it will disappear as you can see there but if we click it will stay permanently and in this little panel we have a couple of things I'll talk about right off the bat this first column of buttons is the three different customizable panels so we have the orbit panel the target panel and the maneuver panel now the next button where we have here and this column is moving this panel. So if we have, say, for instance, the orbital panel open, I can click this and you'll notice it changes transparency from roughly 50%, which I have set down here, to no transparency. And with no transparency, I can move this around to wherever I'd like it to be, which is quite handy to have. And once you have it in place, you just click this again and it'll go into its transparency mode and I cannot click to drag. And the final thing we have here is the options for what all this panel is going to show. Now let's actually talk about this panel before we get into that because there is a few things I'm not showing here already. We'll talk about that more in a second. Now, well, right now what I have in this panel is what I consider to be basically the most useful bits and bobs of information that I generally use in flight. So we have the apoapsis, the periapsis, the inclination, eccentricity, the orbital period, altitude, semi-major access, and land angle. All good things. All very nice information to have. Now, if we click on the little wrench and a cog here, we are given more options. You may notice this little list here has a fair few bit of things more than what I have in this list. Now, one of them you may notice down here at the bottom is because this button isn't pushed in. Now, if we click it to push it in, there we go. It gets added in. And the reason I don't have that, that turned on, because this is manually turning on or off a different setting. And the reason I don't normally have this on is because, frankly, I don't understand it. Apparently, I had to look this up earlier just uh, so I had some vague idea. It's the argument of periapsis, which has something to do with the angle of the descending node in relation to the periapsis, which I, I, don't, I don't know how to use that. So I leave it off. There we go. Now that button is not clicked in and it will not show. But there's a couple of other things on here, such as the radar altitude and the terrain altitude, which are not on at the moment. And that is because, well, basically they have no use right now. These are more for when you're in atmosphere or coming in for a landing. So if we were approaching the moon, once the radar altitude and terrain altitude actually could make a difference, it would show up, but for the time being, you might as well just have the standard altitude here because, well, why have anything else? You're in freaking orbit. That's all you really need there. Now, if we actually, oh, we already do have Orbiter 2 here uh, selected, so let's turn this off and go to the target panel, bring that up next. And let's actually move that thing a little bit around, a bit closer up there, perfect. And then of course bring up its options as well. Now in the target panel that I have turned on right now is 
basically everything. We have the target name, distance to target, closest approached, the relative velocity at that approach, the phase angle, inclination, and velocity, all very good bits and bobs of information to have. And because we are so close to that other orbiter, we got everything on right now. And so that's all good, useful bits of info, which could help make the difference in making sure we can catch up to Orbiter 2 and dock successfully. Very good bits and bobs. Now, again, you could always just change these as you so desire. And uh, on this column over here is the always on thing, which we can either have on or off. So I leave it as this by default where it's basically always off because I like, like say up in the orbital panel, I, I don't care to see the radar altimeter on here at the moment. I only like it on when it's useful. So that basically controls that. Now the next and last panel we have is the maneuver panel. So let's actually turn off the settings and click on you and you and it's this one has a lot less information but still very useful we have the maneuver node itself the burn time you have to achieve the closest approach the relative velocity at approach the phase angle and ooh, we actually do have one that's off right now angle to pro i actually don't know what that one means either interesting i didn't notice that one before Hmm, I'll have to go and look that up later. But I guess because we are still out from that a little bit, in fact, uh, yeah, closest approach in 32 minutes, it would probably come up as we got closer, most likely. And yeah, so that, again, is just a basic information panel to give you a little bit of extra info. Very good and always a beautiful, beautiful thing to have. And again, we can sort of click on all these, move them around to wherever in the world we'd like them to be. And if we do click into to say the map mode, they do still stay in here as well, so that you don't have to leave that especially useful for me when I'm in maneuver nodes, because I'll be looking at different maneuver nodes, editing them, and then going, oh, okay, well, we should probably turn this on and actually do something now. And it's a very good, useful tool to have. And what I didn't really talk about earlier is, well, we briefly touched on it, is these options here. So the transparency is how transparent you want that background to be. Me, I personally like it at 50% because it still gets a good outline to it, so you know that that is a specific different thing than other stuff around it. But if we turn it all the way down to zero, it's just text on the black background of space. Or if we go to full 100%, it's that same opacity as if we were trying to move it. Again, that's why I like it at 50 because not only do we get some sort of delineation between game world and info, but also I know when I click this button here, which one I clicked, where it is, so I can more easily see which one to move. Now the next bit down here is the UI scale, and if this all has been too small for you to read today, well, you can always increase that. So let's say we want to make it go 120% bigger rather than just the 100%. We would move it from the 100 to 120 and then hit set. And there we go. Everything changes a little bit and it's a little bit bigger and a little bit uh, now in the way of one another. But so if you do have a harder time reading the smaller text, you can always make these bigger or smaller to your heart's content. And that is frankly a wonderful thing to be able to do. And just overall, a very great little mod. It's not overwhelming information in my opinion. It's just the useful bits and bobs of information that'll really help make a difference in the flight. And I love that it is customizable, that you can only bring up certain things you want and certain things that are useful at the time. Plus we have the ability to customize the panels, their look, their location, etc. All good things. So if you would like to check out the basic orbit mod for yourself, definitely go take a look at it in the link in the description as always. And I'll actually provide two links in there because, of course, D Magic he makes, rather than being called full mods, he refers to them as modlets. And so he's got like a dozen modlets on that page. So I'll include a link to his forum page and also the space dock download so you can find it a bit more easily. Uh, but yes, it's a great little mod, great information to it, and just overall very, very useful. So go check it out, have some fun with it. And of course, I do hope you have enjoyed this episode today and that you do come back for the next. But until that time, thank you for watching, my friends. And as always, have a good one.